Hi Year 11, so this revision video is about writing um, an effective setting. So this video is for the imaginative writing section of the language paper one. And when you're coming to think about writing your story, it's really important that you write your setting really well. So firstly, let's be really clear about what I mean by description, because I'm going to be using that word a lot today. So description then is when you use your words to give your reader a really clear understanding of a place, a person or an event. So your description would include details of actions, of the age of something, the shape, the size of something, the events. If you're describing a setting which we're looking at today, it would be very specific about, you know, the material that something is made of the shape of something, the age of something, the texture, the details in that setting. And it's very, very important that you understand that description then builds something in your reader's mind. It doesn't mean things are happening. So you can have a person who stood totally still in a location describing everything that's around them and there is no, you know, there's no running, there's no jumping, there's no talking going on. They're just stood completely still creating a description of the setting that they're in. The reason it's really important to do this is because it is a big mistake that pupils make in the exam when they assume that because they've said it's a woods that they don't need to do any more description than that or because they've said it's a school library they don't need to do any more than that and so the way to think about your description is imagine that your examiner is like this person in the picture they are in a totally dark room only your words will help them see the place that your story takes place the people and the action that you create. If you don't say it with your words, then they will not see it. And that's why it's important that you have a really detailed sense of description. So you hopefully will have seen this slide before. It's a really important slide for you to begin to understand how you start building your description. So nouns, which are things, objects, people, places, and adjectives, which describe nouns, are the first step towards creating vivid description. It is the nouns, the circles on the one on the left, um, and the nouns, the crest, the curves on the one on the right, that give you those two different pictures. It's the nouns and the adjectives that you use that create those pictures in your mind. It's exactly the same. If you just tell me that your story is taking place in a house, you might be wanting me to imagine the one on the left-hand side. What I might imagine is the one on the right-hand side. The only way that you take me to the location that you want me to be at for your story is by using nouns, you know, windows, trees, pavements, uh, you know, plant pods, bench, wreath. It's your nouns and your adjectives, orange, green. Yeah, so nouns and adjectives. So you're going to do some tasks as I am uh, walking you through this video which will then hopefully um, help you on the way to this. In addition to the tasks that I'm gonna give you now, there's also this sheet, which is attached to um, the description of the video in Microsoft Streams that you can use as well. So firstly, on a piece of paper, on a Word document somewhere, have a look at this picture, and I want you to list all of the things that you can see. Pause the video, I want you to aim for at least six nouns that you can see in this picture. Pause the video, write them down. Okay, let's have a look. I want you to add any that you've missed. So we've got trees, we've got tree trunks, we've got branches, leaves, rock, 
moss, sunlight, roots. You might have added something else as well, which would be great. So these are our nouns. These are the things that are in this setting, which we are going to try and create a scientific, observational, precise description of. We want our description to use words to create a sense of this place, nothing else. That's why we're saying scientific and observational. All right, second one then. For each of the nouns that were listed, I want you to add at least two adjectives. And these have to be adjectives that are detail oriented. So I want it to be the shape of something or the size of something or the texture or the color or the age or what it's made of. I don't want any emotive words. So you couldn't use eerie or scary because those words mean different things to you and me. Okay, we don't find the same thing scary. All right, again, beautiful means something different to me and you. We don't find the same things beautiful. So what you're actually trying to do is really precisely look at the leaves, for example, and say, all right, what details can we agree on? Well, we can probably agree on some of the colors. We can agree maybe on how many they are. We could agree on maybe something to do with what they look like. So it's the details that I want you to write down. Do that, so pause the video, do at least two adjectives for each of the nouns that we listed. All right, so this is what I came up with and you can have a look at some of the things that you wanted to write. So uh, for the trees, I wanted to get that sense that they're not going straight. So I've said crooked, but they're also tall. Okay, you could have had something like overtowering. For the tree trunks, you want to give the sense of the texture on the bark, don't you? So I've put gnarled, I've also put angled. And then for the branches, you could have, I mean, you could have had a uh, thin or wispy, but I've also got stretching wide there. For the leaves, we've got uh, orange, yellow, brown, and then crisp, you could have had um, something to do with them, you know, flocked together, grouped together. The rocks then, so they're moss covered, they look like they're leaning or resting against each other. And then the moss itself is soft, green, patchy. We could maybe have come up with a particular type of green, but actually moss green is a colour anyway. Then the sunlight. So this sunlight is golden. It's quite soft, isn't it? Quite warm. And then if we're looking at the roots, they may be twisted under the ground, hidden under the, the, the bed of leaves. All right, so now you've got the nouns and the adjectives. You can begin to put them together in phrases and sentences that describe this setting. The thing that you want to be really mindful of as you're writing is, although we want you to be precise and observational, we also want you to describe. That's what description is. So if you were to write, there is a big tree, you may be being accurate, but again, you aren't giving the detail that's required. So have a look at the second one the green and brown tree stretched high into the sky. Look at all the details that are included there now. It's got the color. It's got not just that it's big, but it's absolutely really high into the sky. All right, so how do you apply this in the exam? Firstly, we would like to suggest that you pre-plan your setting and your setting description before the exam. You can get lots of the details together and ready and memorised and then whatever story prompt they give you, you can put into that setting. So there are lots of things that you could do. You can choose an exciting location that you know really well, something in the local area that would lend itself well to a really good description. 
You could choose a setting from a game or a film or a book series that you know really well. You could pick a location that you like and practice describing it. And I've got some examples here. We're going to look at a description of an abandoned building together. You could choose a woods and do maybe a description of woods at night time. Even the school canteen, because it's so busy and noisy and there are so many things in there, is a good location. But what you're aiming to do is to have your setting planned before the exam and then think about, you know, if they want you to write a, a really happy kind of story, what would that be? If they want you to write a really kind of uh, tragic horror story, what would that be in that setting? Because you know the setting really well, it makes it easier for you to begin to put a story into it rather than having to plan everything in that five minutes of planning time at the beginning of the exam. So this is where you can work with this sheet if you want to uh, pick it up from uh, the description of this. So I have given you two kind of ab abandoned locations. So one of them is um, an abandoned house um, on the right hand side. And the one that's on the left is um, an abandoned prison. And for each of these, I would like you to practice the skill of writing nouns and precise adjectives. If you wanted to make these locations really clear for the examiner, how would you do that? Remember, imagine that your examiner is in a totally dark room and unless you describe it and place it for them, they won't see that. How are you going to create that description? When you've written your nouns and adjectives, it's then a really good idea to come back to the kind of the list of words that you could possibly use and try and find some sophisticated and unusual vocabulary to use. And this then will, because you're planning your description in advance, this will put your description at a higher level. So I've got a huge list here. You could choose uh, some from those. You can um, uh, think, you know, you can have a look and, uh, on the internet and, you know, ask, literally Google description of something. And then you could... Uh, find some additional vocabulary that you could use. But remember, you want your description to use vocabulary that's outside of everyday use. So you can then read descriptions of similar settings and see how those descriptions are effective and how you can borrow ideas from them. So I'm just going to read this description to you really quickly. As I stepped inside, the warm glow was replaced by darkness and a single pinpoint of light to my left. Looking up, a chink in the roof, so a chink is like a tiny little gap in the roof, high above sent a beam of light skittering down through the looming dark. All around me, shadows moved and swayed against the walls, first grey, then green, then dark brown. Long ago, this floor must have been polished wood, but now the splintered boards were fragments of a life abandoned. One abandoned, it seemed, in haste. A child's doll, the hair dirty and dank, one eye missing, a pile of books, half rotten, half their stories, like this house, now only an echo of what used to be. The ceilings were high, the windows cracked and boarded, the paint flaking from the walls in melancholic snowdrifts. So you can see how there are parts which I've highlighted of this description that are really effective. And there are phrases there that this pupil has memorized so that they can use them in their own description. All right, so what can you do to help you prepare for the exam? So firstly, decide on a setting that you can pre-plan and use for any story. Plan your description of that setting using nouns and precise adjectives. Think and research vocabulary that you can use. And you can find some similar descriptions, literally just put into Google description of, and you could do a beach at sunset, description of an abandoned hospital. And then finally, 
practice, practice, practice writing your description until it is as good as